Are you also tired of the limited amount of props and detailing options in City Skylines 2? Well, actually in this video, we're going to explore five tips and tricks how you can actually detail your city with the options available. So let's dive into it. All right, number one is roads as detailing. So as you can see over here, this is kind of a weird phase or anything like that. This is a uh, workaround for making things like, for example, planters or pedestrian paths look a bit nicer. So for, for example, over here, this is a single bus lane over here that has been used in order to create this one. You can obviously also use that for any type of beautification if you wish to. The only thing you have to keep in mind, this is a one-way lane. So if you stop building this without connecting them, you always have these things so you always want to make them end and start on a planter like this or on a roundabout like that for example just gonna quickly show to you what I mean by that so first of all let's just do a little bit like this make like a huge roundabout it, you know I'm just showing off now it doesn't matter now as you can see the game wouldn't um, complain anymore and you can utilize that and then you can also pair that obviously with other pedestrian roads uh, just like so for example just like easy stuff, you can utilize these things as wonderful decoration. I highly encourage you to play around with it. You can see you put some trees in the middle and stuff like that. Looks super cool, but you can also do something like this, for example. If you, for example, have like a roundabout, let's just, for example, put one here. Uh, you can also then go in and style this around here if you fancy doing so. You can just uh, try to make sure to utilize this. Maybe you do this with a bit of a more precise build. Just like so. Oh wait, I'm gonna destroy that. I just don't want to destroy this. Let's just move one out. So for example like that. And then you just build this all the way around the roundabout. So that you create like a nice little, you know, I don't know. It's it's. You have to be a bit more patient than I am right now. But this is just to show off. Something like this works fine. And then you would get rid of the... Um, uh, the little markings here on the street, so for example, just get rid of those, there you go. And then you can do some markings like that. Obviously, remember, buses will be able to take this, but uh, in order to make things look a bit more beautiful, this is a wonderful way of doing it. So for example, if this uh, wonderful roundabout would be enlarged like so, you can see this, um, you know, if you would have done this nicer than I have right now, uh, you would have this wonderful circle around and uh, kind of like acting like a little planter over here where you can also put some trees and stuff in. That's it, let's move on to the next one. Number two in the list is raised planters. As you can see over here, I made like a wonderful little planter area that is created very simply um, with a little bit of terrain and some roads. It's very similar to what you've seen in my other tutorial, but I'm just gonna quickly show this to you. So first of all, we're gonna get this uh, height over here of the terrain, just paint a little terrain over here, just like that. And then you go to the road of your desire. I would recommend one of those two roads. You can actually do it also with um, the wonderful pavement our pathways over here but this one is very tricky I'm just gonna show you uh, real quick this one is super small and sometimes it just creates some weird awkward uh, areas to the other side and then once you you know get the terrain closer to it it will create some awkward looking areas now um, you can do something else with it though I'm gonna show you in a second but first of all let's do this uh, finishing touches here so you take your road I would recommend to not be in uh, snap mode just do it that way and then you are like with a normal simple curve and then you just curl that around in a nice way. Um, you gotta have to be a bit more careful because sometimes uh, you don't really get these wonderful form factors done. Um, I tried my best to come up with a good solution to make like a perfect circle, but you know, truth to be told, it is possible, but it's a lot of finicky work. Once you've done that, it's looking a little bit weird. Um, you go back to your terrain painting tool, you select the level terrain tool, go all the way down to the lowest, keep it at, well, you can actually go a little bit higher to like 75%, and then you have to paint very carefully carefully over the edges here. Um, they, first of all, just get the height necessary and then you will see as you paint over, you will align these upper areas. But you have to be careful because the further you go out, you're gonna destroy the lower area too. There you go. And then something ugly like this happens. That's something you do not want to have. So if that happens, you can always push it back like so and fix it, but don't do too much because then you destroy the upper area. So very carefully doing that. Um, the wider the road is you take, 
as a guidance road around, the easier it is later on to align the terrain. But you know, once that is done, it's all set and you can put whatever on top. You could also, um, sometimes it looks kind of cool if you put like a, okay, well that one is, oh actually it would work, you know, you can even put like a wind turbine on top of it and then you would need to connect the uh, stuff manually like so, put it below ground and then you can still connect this to here. There you go. And then you've got like a wind turbine on top of that one. Could also look very cool for like a wind park and you can do this in different heights. So um, that's gonna look really cool once you have like a wind park like that. It almost looks a little more realistic with uh, these things being like on, on elevated areas. Really cool stuff, but let's move on to the next one. Right, next up is using bridges to your advantage. You can see this one over here could be a nice entrance to like a gated community, for example, or just for a park or anything else that you can do creatively with those bridges. In order to do this and make it look nice, you have to actually build yourself a little bit of a helping grid first of all. So just start wherever you want. Let's say this over here is our grid. So let's kind of paint this and then let's try actually this time around to do actually the same. So we've got like five units over here. Let's do the same. Five units there so this is that I want to have the main stuff in the middle but then branch out to both sides so like this for example so I have one here the other one goes here and then basically this was wrong because I didn't pay attention to the right one so you really want to make it as good as possible so I'm just going to do it right now like so just painting these all into the positions I really do hope that this will work from the distance but we're gonna make the little test right now over here so just give them the notes they require there you go just bring those things down awesome so as soon as you've done that you've got basically the main grid and you can actually go here and delete that one and then what you want to do is you basically take the bridge over here just go exactly at the center point and then you can raise it up until it shows being a bridge so that is like 6.2 meters actually is my size right then you go one in and try to paint it as long as it doesn't work just keep raising it maybe we need one more yeah there you go it's 8.75 meters we need over here and then you paint it exactly into the center where you need this so now you have got the perfect bridge aligned you can make it shorter longer whatever you want um, and from now on i'm going to delete these uh, we don't need these guidance anymore but what we need is actually go here and then try dragging it all into the corner Lower it down. Okay, so you can see over here, this is too short actually. Um, I made a little oopsie here. Well, actually, as you still have the grid, what you wanna do then is you basically wanna paint like maybe, um, there you go, that's still on, let's put it down on zero over here. And then we just kind of branch this out one more like this. And before you go on, just test if that is enough, okay? I'm just going to do it that way and get rid of these over here. We don't need them I and mean, we still have the edges, so that is fine. Um, then you go back to the bridge and try if that works. Well, sometimes you just go one in front and then raise it a couple of times until it works. Uh, so for example, 3.75, that's nice over here. Um, and now you could do the exact same on the other side, just for the showcase. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. So, whoops, that was still raising it. We didn't want that. Um, Let's do whoops, the exact same thing again on zero meters. There you go, one, two, three, four. And then we just create that little corner piece and delete the other nodes around. Go back to the bridge and then uh, you can actually bring it down here to the position and then yet again, raise it as long, same height, wonderful. Now that's created, you can basically then go in and well actually if you want to you could do this with the other side too let's quickly check if it does it because sometimes these things look really cool once they are done so i'm just going to oh look at that we raised it yet again i always forget to reset it so that's a little learning for you too just go all the way down to zero otherwise you're gonna have a little issue here so let's just create that and this over here oops that was fantastically stupid from me and now let's create this little well we don't need that it's fine so that is this and then let's see if the bridge connects here too so if you go over you can see it does the same mistake and then you should actually go yeah wonderful it does exactly the same and now you've got the perfect um 
kind of bridge layout if you want to have it like that one. We can also get rid of this one. You've got like a little Y, for example. And then from over here, you can basically connect these things with an alley. Just go over here, go down to the ground, and then you would have it. And so you could do something really cool looking with it. Um, just, I don't know, do something like that, put some trees in the middle, make like a gated community. And the fantastic thing is you can also play around with other bridges. So for example, if you take that one over here, you actually need to go a bit higher. So that is actually a good height. Let's go one higher. And then you could also do fancy stuff like complex curve, for example, uh, until this works. Okay, exactly like 120, ah, look at that, it's fine. There you go. And then as you can see, you can also do some cool stuff with it, doing the curve, you can, start making like an octagon for example and a hexagon or whatever you want uh, so it's kind of cool to use these things to advantage too um, because they have a really nice form factor now we could actually use that one as a straight piece no it doesn't really connect i thought it would but it doesn't okay well maybe it's because of the i'm quite sure it is definitely because of the pillars sometimes the pillars are the issue well actually they're not Maybe it's the angle, whatever. But the thing is, you can you can basically utilize these things to your advantage to do something really cool. I most likely love to use them to create some lower parks. Like if you have a park with um, people going through here, that looks so much more cool. Sometimes you can even push a park below. Um, let's use the smaller one. Okay, well, that one is not overlapping. You have to raise it then a bit more. Um, but it looks really cool once you have this um, surrounded by these things. So let's move on to the next one. All right, number four is using path to your advantage. Now we've done this with streets, first of all, but I want to specifically highlight this wonderful pathway in the terraforming menu down here, because this one is a little bit weird. It does things that it shouldn't do, and this is fantastic for the sake of using it. So um, the first usage I have found with it was doing this as a little ditch uh, or using some smaller canals in the city. Or you can see I've used that in the middle here to create something like a little separation in between the two highway lanes, which, um, also works super well but you can also do some other fancy stuff with it as you can see over here um, you can use it for example like a modern art piece or whatever put it in the park and do it that way up until 20 meters in the height you can do some really cool stuff like kind of very geometrical things paired with the uh, with the different um, uh, bridge options you can also like op update the bridge well that one doesn't but you could also add like one in the middle to have like a wonderful art piece for example like this um you can do something weird like this more about this in a second but then if you have these ditches you can also fill them with water over here lower it down to to a level that it is below water and then you just go along your uh wonderful area like this for example just make sure that you paint along where your ditch should go um, so that is basically flooded like this and then you can just also lower it down even further so that the water flows in and then you let the game do the rest as you can see now it's filling up. Um, the problem though is once you want to raise the terrain later on again you can it's not it's not really a problem you can basically raise the terrain again as you can see uh, that's really easy to do however you do not want to cap the entrance where the water came flowing in so for example over here don't don't just cap that off okay leave it as it is and then you can uh just redo it very carefully here to the sides just like i do over here and then in the middle you can also raise it again if you if you want to have this like a dry patch in the middle there you go and once that is done you can basically use it like this but it's very important that you don't cap it off as i did over here then the water stops flowing in uh, i wasn't careful enough as you can see there's a little gap in between which i would need to get rid of now um, and now over time it would start to fill up again um, you can very nicely see that once you have the contour lines enabled there's always needs to be like a little bit of an opening as you can see over there and then it all keeps flowing in uh, but you can do this very precise and then it looks really cool having water in your little ditches really cool stuff i really hope that they fix that and maybe you can use them as actual little canals i really do love them but now speaking about this one um i found something really weird happening but you can do some really odd yet good looking stuff with it so once you have this raised for example like this and you you build some kind of connections like so and then let's do like a smaller one here too one like this i don't know you can use them in the weirdest ways possible and what you do now is just deactivate the toggle modes in general raise it a bit further maybe and now let's see that if that does it there you go you can just put that in and create some really odd connections like this it's so funky i don't know why it happens but you can also sometimes it even lets you connect them 
in the most weirdest way possible. But then you can like also, for example, do this. And then just kind of, I don't know, sometimes... Okay, that's fancy, but maybe we can... We can do some more over here. There you go. Ah, yeah, there you go. So you can do some really odd stuff. I, I don't know why you would do that, but... As like a, I don't know, sometimes this like a nice canopy, it just kind of works wonders, you know. That one over here, if you then delete the rest, there you go, this is this is nice. You can also squeeze like, for example, these apple trees in, and they will eventually grow just a little bit more, and it almost looks like a little greenhouse plant or whatever. So you can do some really funky stuff with it. Okay, hold on, you can actually do some weird stuff like that, and I love it. It is so wild that it works, but you can actually do it. And last but not least, we're talking about creative zoning. Now, for example, in this uh, spot over here, you can see a couple of different zones. Now, um, you can see how much more natural this row house segment over here looks versus that one. And you can also see how much more nice this area looks in comparison to that one. So the main reason for this is basically in order to just change your zones according to what you want to do. So uh, to give you an easy example, this zone in the middle over here contains only of North American styled homes and I just completely filled in the area. Then this area over here is a really, really little bit more different because I started to mix up the American and the European style because they go well in together. Over here I altered the different sizes of the houses and in this very one over here I even added one commercial zone within that area. So this is a mixture of everything, having the different style zoning and also the different style uh, with commercials within that area and I also use the pathway in a bit more of a roundy way as well. Um, so to give you a brief example how that can look, you can basically go in and then just kind of zone out your area. Oops, uh, let me just keep that straight for the segment here and then we can look for the perfect alignment. There. There you go, you've got the perfect area and you know, instead of just going here and using the fill tool, which then would just make automatically everything grow in, um, you can have a bit more control over it. So you're gonna start with the fill button and you're building, let's say you wanna have like a bigger one over here. There could be a bit of an entrance for the backstage area there, two houses are being built and then on this corner, for example, why not have a commercial building here, first of all, then you switch over to the North American style have one house here, maybe big one on the corner, you've got two, okay fine, then you switch over to the uh, European style, yet again make a bigger one, bigger plot over here, okay well actually two, two plots, uh, you can actually, you know what, we're just gonna do it that way, gonna get rid of one to hopefully just have one plot existing, there you go, now you've got one plot, if you're not happy with it you can always uh, bulldoze it um, and then you just go on and uh, you know paint in as long as you want, so for example you can also uh, ensure that this way you have the perfect alignment to the side, so you want to have this hemlock street down here, so do paint it from over there, or maybe we're just gonna go with three and then you can see the building is forming, now we want to have two from this side, you can basically go in, let's change to the other style again and then have one here here. and then if you want to have like uh, another one here you do it that way and have one go into the center a bit more there you go full control of the buildings and now you can do something with the pathway as well just uh, oops bring that to zero meters back again there you go and now you can switch this one in the center just make it go through here very nicely indeed. I would always recommend to disable the snapping for that because then you can also go exactly in the middle because sometimes if you're not precise enough this happens but you can easily fix that by just painting over again and fixing the lot. But this way you make like a wonderfully um, designed little area without the repetitiveness of this over here and it just looks so much more interesting. It will be specifically obvious the more the houses grow over time and the same goes for row houses. They got very well together, the European and the American ones. Um, but in here I didn't pay attention and you can see they are even this, the, the wrong side. These things are on this street while they are on that street and I would have loved to have everyone on this street. So an easy fix for that basically is pause the game, get rid of those two who are aligned in the wrong way, then you go back in um, um, and then basically get rid of this one stream over here. Then you just do that. You can actually delete all of these and you can see immediately houses are forming. And now once this is done, you can basically put that one more in and everyone is oriented to the correct detection area or the right side. Now, that's that for this segment of our build. And now let's do a little conclusion before ending the video. 
And once you combine everything, your area could look more like this. I mean, this is like a very quick one, okay? But you can definitely tell how the different techniques, uh, you know, help you to shape your area in a much more nicer way to make it look a bit more interesting. And we could go on forever. There are so many more techniques you could utilize. But for the moment, I really hope that these techniques help you to make your areas look a bit more interesting. And hopefully this tutorial will be absurd and unnecessary in a couple of months because we have them but so long hopefully this was helpful thank you so much as always for watching and if you found this helpful please consider subscribing to the channel i will do a lot more of these tutorials in the future if you want to have more of those so thank you so much for your continued support and have a good one until then goodbye